Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is great to have you here because in today's episode, we're going to be making Beskar steel from the Mandalorian. Before we jump in though, let's quickly thank today's sponsor, which is Audible, the online audiobook listening platform that I absolutely love. I've been finishing up some great audiobooks lately, and I hope that you go to audible.com forward slash forge or text forge to 500 500 to get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, which is half off. The regular price. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this. Let's light the forge and jump on in. So this is some Beskar steel from the show The Mandalorian. And what is extremely exciting about this to me is as somebody that loves these crafts of blacksmithing and bladesmithing, these crafts that have been around for of years, as somebody who loves these things, to see that in popular culture, more and more and more, we're seeing Damascus things is awesome. The new Rambo movie's got Damascus in it, and now this, a really popular show, is treating this as currency. Obviously, Beskar steel, Damascus steel, they're not really trying to make it Damascus steel, but it is Damascus steel. That's a Damascus pattern, and we're gonna recreate that piece of currency. So making the Damascus is gonna be quite easy, but it gives us the opportunity to have some fun and try and make a punch to stamp that symbol in. That's where the real challenge is gonna be today. So Alex started off with a 17 layer stack. Uh, that means that each piece of this that we cut and restack onto itself is going to add 17 layers to our total count. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, cut these ends off. Those are usually not good steel and we'll reforge weld it together. We're shooting for somewhere around the 170 layer mark. Time now to weld up the ends, weld on a handle, and go ahead and forge weld it again. Good, Will. Looks like you're ready to start drawing that out into its final little form. Yes, but before I do that, I'm gonna grind off that little nasty burr that we got during the hot cutting. Beautiful. Just take a grinder to it real quick and throw it back in the forge. Very nice. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to crack on with the punch that we need to make. We wanna stamp in the Imperial Mark. To do that, we have a piece of 4340 steel chucked up in the lathe. I'm gonna turn it down, and it's gonna be a mixture of lathe work and then carbide burr work for us to make a stamp, and then we're also gonna harden it too. So I'm gonna turn this on, I'm gonna turn down the outer diameter, uh, probably to about 7 eighths of an inch or so, 22 millimeters, before working on some of the inside features of the stamp. At the beginning of the episode, I said that our greatest challenge would be the punch. Now, little did I know, it would not only be our greatest challenge of the day, but it may be the greatest challenge of the week, and that's saying something, because this week has been a challenging week. Looking at this, my simple brain thought, oh, easy peasy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a punch. We're gonna channel out a groove around the outside. We'll drill a hole in the punch. We'll then drill some other holes and connect them together. But that would just be ridiculous. 
because what we're trying to do is make a punch. We're not trying to make the impression of the punch. We're trying to make the tool that's going to form that impression. So it needs to be the inverse. So just before I realized this, I was getting set to go ahead and drill a hole right here. Because, you know, there's a hole right there. Instead, the punch needs a peg in the middle. The side of this punch, cut in half, needs to look a little bit like that. With hexagons. I've given myself a grand and huge challenge. We had a CNC milling machine, the perfect tool for this kind of job. We don't have a CNC, but we have a MNC. And let me tell you, not quite as smart as a, as a computer. So this is gonna be a challenge. So now that this is a whole lot more of a challenge than I thought, and this is gonna require some like serious thinking, um, which is a difficult one for me to do, I'm gonna make this an exact diameter. Instead of just, you know, winging it and making the thing, you know, easy peasy lemon squeezy, this needs thought right now. It is 9090, we're gonna make it 900,000 diameter, which is about 22.8 millimeters. And then from there, I'm gonna open up the computer, draw up this design, and start plotting measurements. Okie dokie, got it, 900,000. I don't have any 5C collets, however, that will hold this. Oh, actually, that's a 28 millimeter collet. This is an inch and a quarter. I'm gonna flip this around in the lathe, turn this down so it fits into that. Alrighty, there we go, that's 28 millimeters. All righty, everybody. So, we filmed a whole load of stuff, and it was garbage. So I'm gonna sum it all up here. Last time you saw me, I was working away at the lathe, and I went through all sorts of ideas as to how it is that I could make this thing work, from clamping it in a 5C collet block, putting it in the milling machine, and then like roughing out all the stuff. So I then went to Fusion 360 and tried to design it all out and get some measurements so I'd work out where to plug in the measurements on the DRO on the mill. And then we're all the way now to here, where I've abandoned that hope and that dream to just take carbide burrs, and freehand out. The Empire logo's negative in the stamp. It's way lower tech than trying to get it done on the milling machine, but I would have no chance of having any sort of success there. So lower tech it is. I printed off the logo that I've drawn up. We're gonna take some spray adhesive. We're gonna stick it on. I'm gonna start cutting by hand. So here's what I've done. I took our 350 or 400,000 RPM air burr. And you see that? It looks like a little screwdriver tip on it. At that speed, that's all you need to remove material. This was a dull burr. I just ground a screwdriver tip on it. And I've gone and made an outline of our shape with this tiny little thing. What we're now gonna do is move to an actual carbide burr in our electronic handpiece and hog out the rest of the material. Now we've got our lines made. Alrighty, this is the progress I've made. This is how it's looking. It looks like what we need it to look like, which is important. But what's not lost on me is how likely it is that it looks fine from this angle, but as we stamp it into something, it looks terrible. So I have a little piece of Play-Doh, and we're gonna give it the old smack. Well, hey, that looks pretty good. That looks like just what we're after. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that'll do just fine. There is one slight problem, though, that's gonna be an easy fix. It's not quite in the middle of the piece. I'm just gonna grind the edge of our steel, and then we can take this to heat treat and get back to work on the Beskar steel itself. Get this warming up. Oh, that's toasty. At the end of yesterday, this is where Will left off on the Beskar steel billet. He's got some patination going on in there by making some little divots and dents. I'm now gonna come to the mill, this beautiful Bridgeport mill. And we're gonna hog off some material with a face mill. There is about, short of sawing and drilling, 
there are a few things that it remove as much material as a nice two-inch face mill with four indexable carbide inserts. We're gonna hog so much stuff, you'll think we're roasting a pig. I think that just does the trick quite nicely. Very simple, some nice little lines going across it. It's exactly what we're after. This now gets to go back in the forge, so all that fine finishing work that I did on the grinder is for naught. Not exactly true. I did the fine finishing work even though it's about to get oxidized because I only need to heat it up for one heat. And by having it ground nicely, it means when we're done stamping our mark in it, it's gonna take a whole lot less grinding to get back to clean material. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the forge be very fuel rich. That means we're gonna put a lot of fuel in it so that the metal oxidizes less. You see as that dragon's breath comes out, that means we're pushing more and more propane in. As the dragon's breath is shorter, it's a much more oxidizing flame. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna come out with the hot steel, lay it down, lay this on top, then bring it down. And we're just gonna have to kiss the surface. I'm gonna leave this ready there. Hopefully we won't mess this up and punch the entire way through. Here we go, here we go. Oh no, too deep. Okay, it looks pretty awesome, but it's deeper than I'd like. So all that effort I did in finishing it is useless. Yeah, I wasted a lot of time, but it's gonna look great. Well, we might as well go ahead and harden it right now, because it's gonna need to get hardened for the Damascus pattern to look as good as it wants to look. Okay, Doug, let's quench it. Since this is ornamental more than anything, we're just gonna do a very quick and rough temper. We've done some tempering. It's now time to go to the grinding room. This is a fun little project. I'm really pleased you guys came along. It's really exciting to see that, you know, Damascus steel is making its way into the mainstream. And what I was most thrilled about on this was making that little stamp. That was exciting. Carving that out of that 4140 and having it work and leave a pretty cool impression. We are gonna be giving this away, so check out our Instagram for more information on that. But as we end the video, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Audible. Audible is the audiobook listening platform that I absolutely love. They have the largest selection of audiobooks in the world, and I love of the personal development that I get from listening to audiobooks. I'm able to listen to things that help me push this business in better directions and be more organized. I'm also able to listen to good stories. Recently, we have been trying a big push here at the workshop to get into lean management and lean manufacturing techniques and how it is that we operate. This goes as far as us having a morning meeting every single day and us cleaning and organizing the workshop every day. Look at how beautiful this place is. It's unbelievable. And this book from Paul Akers called Two Second Lean has been an invaluable resource through this process of helping us learn how to be more effective 
and help us get our end goal achieved of providing value to our customers in the best way possible. So I highly recommend that you go and listen to Two Second Lean by Paul Akers on Audible because I'm loving what it's doing to the company already. So you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month by going to audible.com forward slash forge or by texting forge to 500, 500 which means that you can get listening to this audiobook and other great titles straight away. Thank you Audible for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for being here. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.